Hi, hello, and welcome to your Go Fly Your Kite workshop, where we're going to have a lot of fun and lots of play uh, with this workshop today. So hopefully with you at the moment, you'll either have your little kite kit in a box, uh, or you'll have received it in one of our sleeves. So it doesn't matter which uh, way you've received it, the contents are exactly the same. So when you start to unpack everything, just take a little time and try to be careful because there are a few bits and pieces inside the box and the, the package that you need to kind of really make sure you keep safe because some of, some of it you're not going to be using until the very end. So you've got this and we are going to demonstrate for you the whole process of taking the kite out, setting it up, and tracing a picture, or you might actually want to draw your own picture. Uh, it's entirely your decision because the whole point in the workshop is to have fun and to enjoy the play and the creativity that we're going to have when designing the kites. And of course, we're going to be building the kites and then we're going to be showing you and telling you a little bit about how to fly the kites. So you can watch this uh, short presentation. Uh, it should take about 20 minutes. Uh, and it's really an opportunity for you to see myself, I'm George, and the other guy is Glenn. And we're going to be taking you through exactly what you, you're going to be doing when we finish. You're also going to receive a, a little link to a support video. So everything we're going to do in the next 15 or 20 minutes will be contained in that short support video. And that's going to last about four minutes. So when you get that, you go, you're going to be able to start and stop that video link uh, to suit yourself. And so don't worry about remembering all the details that we're going to go through now uh, or what we've been doing and how we've been doing it. Uh, we will get you through this exactly the same process when you get that support video uh, at the end of the workshop. So just sit back and enjoy the next little while and we will hopefully end up with some really, really fantastic looking kites that you can get outside and play with uh, in the next few days. So I've got this pack and uh, you can open it and just make sure that if there are little bits around it, um, if you have younger brothers or sisters, that they don't get their hands on them. So you have a little card. So you can also go onto our website, goflyyourkite.com and there's some more information there that will help you if you do get stuck. So inside this, we've got the kite. Uh, we've got a picture coming out of it as well. We're gonna look at that in a moment. We've got the all important handle with string. And right down there, you have your markers. So these are permanent markers. So I guess we all know that that means they don't come off. So we're gonna be really careful with these markers. Uh, if you get it on your hands, your skin, it will wash off with some soap and water. Uh, it won't come off your clothes that easily. And it definitely doesn't come off the kites because that's why we use a permanent marker. So that in this country, if we get lots of rain, your kite is going to look perfect uh, right throughout whatever weather conditions uh, you are out flying your kite in. So you've got your picture. All right. So I don't know what picture you would have received in your uh, little kit, but what I've got a nice big fish here, it's making me hungry. Um, inside your kite, when you open it out, please be careful because there are two tiny rods, okay? So these are a bit like the arms of the kite uh, and we're going to use those at the end. Glenn will be showing you how you build your kite using these little arms, uh, small rods and the handle with the string. So the best thing to do is let mom or dad or granny or grand or whoever's with you uh, at this moment, let them maybe take those and keep them to the side out of the way until you need them. So you can just slot the little rods through the grip where you would normally put your fingers and leave them somewhere nice and safe or let one of the grown-ups uh, take them and keep them out of the way until you need them. So the front of the kite, when you look at it, has this big long piece of string and you'll see there's a little loop on the string and that's where the handle will be tied to at the very end. There's also a tail. And the tail's tied up with um, a little loom band. And inside here, there's about two meters of tail. So we don't want to fiddle with this and we don't want to open it while we're inside because it's only going to become a headache for you. You're going to be tangled up on it. You're going to be standing on it. You're going to be tripping on it. 
And this is a really important part of it, kind of gives a balance. So try not to do anything with this until you're outside. And Glenn will be talking a little bit about that as well. We need to keep this safe. Makes the kite fly. So just leave it, ignore it at this point, okay? The back of the kite has a big long rod. We call this the spine of the kite. And it's like the spine in our bodies that holds everything together. And if you look at it, just before you start, you'll see that it's in a little pocket at the top and another little pocket at the bottom. So we will be taking it out of the pockets to do the design part, but we will be putting it back in the pockets at the end. So if you have a little look, just to see where it is, then it's going to make it a little bit easier when you come to construct your kite uh, and build it a little later that you know where it's, it has to go back. Another good idea is to protect the surface you're working on. And I'm trying to show you, I've got a really big um, uh, tablecloth. It, it's a, a wipeable, it's PVC. Um, so you might want to get one of those uh, or even use a bin liner and just cut the bin liner open and spread it over the surface that you're working on because it's really important when we use these permanent markers that you don't lift your kite up and build it and go out to play and you have left the kitchen table covered in marker because mom or dad or granny or granddad are certainly not gonna be pleased. So make sure you cover the surface with something that's really good at protecting uh, as you work with the markers. So take your picture and set it on the table uh, or the surface you're working on, just set it in front of you. And then we're going to take this spine out of the kite. Okay, so it just pops out at the top and the bottom of the kite. You will see that it's still attached by string. So do not take the string off the kite, okay? Leave it connected with the two pieces of string. Um, the back of the kite where the little pockets are and where the rod has been just sits on top of your picture. And you can flatten that out and it's nice, nice and smooth and it's transparent so you can actually see your picture through the kite. And we're going to copy it. We're going to trace that picture that you have onto your kite. Or even if you're designing your own kite, if you're going to draw your own picture, it's really important to use a dark marker. So in your uh, little set of markers, you'll find a really dark marker. So it might be like this gray one or it might be a black one. Um, and you're going to use that to do the tracing. And Glenn's going to show you what to do with your picture or with your design and how to do it really easily and get the best out of your kite design. So over to Glenn. George, so uh, this is the interesting part where you actually get to do the designing. So um, I've actually chosen this one here on my one, just a frog, um, just to keep it nice and simple. So um, you've taken the rod out, but which is still attached to the kite. And you basically slide the picture right underneath the kite. And as you can see on, on the camera there, you can actually see the picture coming through. We're going to use a dark marker. I've got a black one here. So um, all you do is just take the lid off. And the secret is to make sure that you keep your hand firmly on the kite as you're tracing and copying the lines from the picture on the kite. And the thing is, this is a great fun activity. And it's, it's great because once you do this, you're able to take it out and play with your kite side and have loads of fun. So I'm going to start just by showing you how simple this really is. And it's it's a it's a case of just following each line and making sure that uh, you copy what's in front of you. Um, younger children will probably need a wee bit of help from adults. And the reason why we do the outline is to show definition. So when the kite's up in the air, it will actually show that that's what the the uh, the image uh, is on the kite. So again, if you wanted to um, move your your uh, picture further to the left or further down the kite, and then leave more space, you can add more pictures. And um, just remember that these these markers are permanent. You want to make sure you cover the table, as George mentioned, to make sure that nothing goes through onto your lovely table. Um, at home. So the best kites are done by children that take their time when they're doing the outline um, and when they're colouring in. Again, there's no rush because you can you can fast forward this, you can rewind this uh, video to show what you need to see. 
the string on the front of the kite, when you're doing your, your copying, you just simply move it out of the way. You don't need to do anything else. Just keep it attached to stay attached to the kite. So um, make sure you just move it out of the way as you're going around and doing the outline. And also, also think things like faces are, um, are, are great on kites because they stand out. Nearly done on this one. So once you've done the outline, then you can color it in and you get loads of different colors of markers um, that you can choose from. Um, to speed things up a little bit, um, you can take the picture I just took um, and you'll see the, the designs on the kite, which is brilliant. So all your hard work is now on there. Um, and to speed things up a little bit, I have um, done one earlier, um, as you can see. And there it is on, on the kite, you can see. Now, when you've done the, the colouring in, um, you now need to build the kite. And I'm going to show you now how to do that. So what we do is we flip the kite back over to where we took the rod out. And we're going to put it back into place. And on the kite, there are little pockets on the top, uh, the, the corners, and on the bottom. So there's little pockets. And it's here where the big rod itself is put in. And then this is where your two rods come into play um, between the, the arms, what we call the arms of the kite that go across on both sides. So we're going to put the, the rod into the kite at the top so you can see just there. And we're going to pop that into there. And there's a little slit, and that's just where you put the kite um, into the, the, the rod, into the kite, into the little pocket. Okay, like that. Now, if this happens and the rod comes through like that, um, don't worry, you haven't broken it. It just hasn't been put into the proper uh, pocket itself. So take it back through and pop it in. It hasn't, it hasn't ripped or anything. Um, it just hasn't been put in, in the pocket correctly, like so. So we've got the big rod in, uh, in the kite itself. And we're going to use these two rods here. And the bubble end goes in first into the little pocket on the side, like here. Uh, and you can see that's where it goes into. We then put it into the centerpiece uh, connector, which is right in the middle. And this slides up and down the rod itself. And we just line it up across with the two pockets on both sides because that's where it needs to be lined up with. Um, so just remember that um, it needs to be put into the center connector. There's a little hole here on this side, okay? And a hole on the other side. We just pop it into, into the connector like so. Turn the kite around and we put it into the other pocket. Just be simply put in the bubble end in first. And to make it easier, the, the, second, the second rod lift centerpiece up to make it easier for you putting it in into the centerpiece. Now, if your kite stays like this when you put this, the, both rods in, all we need to do is we need to push this centerpiece forward and watch how it goes flat onto the kite. So we push it forward, it goes flat on the kite, and we have a lovely arc across, which makes the kite aerodynamic. So remember, if you put the rods in like that, and you can see the angle from there, just how high up it sits. We're going to make it nice and flat just by pushing that down like that. And that's really crucial to make it aerodynamic. So if you can remember that. The front of the kite, as George said, um, this is the tail. And there's two meters of tail on the kite. Um, it's advisable just to keep that the way that uh, that is inside if you're in the house or wherever you're making your kite. Because if you open it, it creates tangles creates a lot of mess and a lot of hassle. And that gives the balance to the kite because the tail is right down the center of the kite. Just like any aircraft, if it's got a tail, it's right down the middle of the, the, the fuselage. So remember, it's right down the middle and that's the reason that why, because it gives balance. So on the front, with your lovely design of the kite itself, um, we're going to uh, put the string on and there's a little tiny loop 
you can see there, bring that right up to the camera, you can see there's a little tiny loop and we're going to take a little piece of string from the handle and we're going to tie it on to the loop. So that means you will be connected from the ground to the kite when it's up in the air. We recommend you put two or three knots just to make it really, really tight onto the loop. Okay, so when you've done that, um, that is your kite completed. And um, we recommend that you, you put the handle right on the top whenever you're carrying it or flipping it around. So just very simple um, to trace and to copy it onto the kite and to build it. It takes less than, less than two minutes to do that. And it's really good fun and you'll have lots of time to play with it over the next few days. So that's me and I'm gonna hand back to George. That's great, Glenn, thank you very much. So we've now gone from our blank kites and we have managed to design, trace, colour and ended up with something a little like this. So I'm sure you're so far better than I because I'm terrible at art. But we look forward to seeing some of those pictures of your finished kites. Um, but as Glenn said, when you have this bit done and the handle's on the top, just going to hold the point at the top, so the handle's locked into place. Now, you're going to be going out to fly the kite, and I know you'll be very excited to get outside and have a go with it. Um, so we need to think about where we're going to go and how we're going to fly the kite. So it's really important that we get a nice open space. So we need to stay away from hazards. So the lack of trees, kites, do not like trees at all. So you can control where you stand, the wind controls where your kite will be flying. So we need to make sure we've got plenty of space. Normally we are just looking around at eye level, but remember, you're gonna have maybe 10 or 15 meters of string, but the kite's gonna be up into the air. Uh, so we've got to have a look at that distance, quite a distance from where we're gonna be standing. So make sure that there's no trees too close, uh, or the overhead cables, the, ele the electric wires, we never play near them. So it's really important just to find a nice open space. It might be in your back garden. Uh, it might be in your, your nearest park. You might be going to the beach. I don't know where you're going to find or where you're going to be going, but just find somewhere that's nice and safe. Away from traffic as well, because when the kite goes up and it's flying, it might land. And if it, you're standing close to a road, it might land on the road. And we don't want the guards to become looking at us. Uh, having flown the kite and landed on the road and caused a bit of chaos uh, with the traffic. So just find a nice safe open space. If you're flying with your kite with another friend who's doing this today as well. Uh, make sure that you stay as far apart as possible. Don't be standing side by side when you fly the kite. The two of you can stand as far apart as possible. You can still see each other's kites. You can still hear each other. Uh, you can still have lots of fun, but there's less likelihood that the kites are going to get blown together and get into a real tangled mess. So we're ready to fly about a metre of string, really short piece of string to get started, okay? And the hand that's holding the string is going to go right up as if you're going to touch the clouds and you're going to drop the tail. Remember, this is the time when we're going to open the tail, take the elastic off it and we're ready to go. And if you throw your kite up and run as fast as you can, the wind is going to pick the kite up. And as soon as it starts to lift, you can wriggle your wrist and the wind's going to be pulling your kite and the string will come off and the kite's going to get higher and higher. And that's all the running you need to do because the wind will do all the work for you. And you can have hours of fun. You can be out running around, you can be flying your kite, you can share it with your friends. Uh, the whole family can have a go with the kite. Uh, the secret about keeping it in good condition is when the kite's on the ground at any point, even if it's trying to get it started, it might take you a couple of tries just to get the kite going uh, until you kind of pick up the, the right kind of little skills. Or the wind might stop blowing, or you might have had enough fun flying the kite and the kite's back on the ground. What we really would encourage you to do is to put the string onto the handle and walk back to where your kite's lying and pick it up. Never drag the kite back to where you're standing. Even if you're on grass or on a beach, if you drag the kite over any surface, you're going to damage these little points, okay? So these kind of corners at the top of the kite are the areas that take all the wear and tear. So it's just trying to avoid the stitching coming out. Sometimes these little rods will peek out the, at the corner. If that happens, you can just put a little bit of tape over and around the actual rod 
and the kite will still fly perfectly well. So if you kind of look and go, oh, my kite's wrecked, that's it, the rod's hanging out. Don't panic because you can just get mom or dad to pull the rod back inside and put a little bit of tape over and another piece or a couple of pieces around it and the kite is ready to fly again. So please don't worry if you do get too excited and you, it does get a little bit of wear and tear, but it will fly perfectly well, even if you've had to put some tape on it. So that's it. Uh, you're going to be able to watch the support video uh, and that's going to take you through very easy to follow steps uh, so that you can kind of do exactly what we've been doing in the last 25 minutes or so. And uh, hopefully you can send us some pictures, there's some contact information that you'll be able to get, whether it's to your local library or local councils, uh, sports partnerships. We would love to be able to see exactly what fun you've had and what play you're going to be having. So if mum and dad can take some pictures for you and send them across, we would love to see them and enjoy your kite design and enjoy the flying when you get outdoors. And from Glenn and myself, thanks for watching. Happy flying. <laughs>